I'm glad you could join us. Go ahead and stab the like button and stick around for the next untold story. Eliza, an amateur photographer with a burgeoning interest in the macabre, decided to embark on a project documenting historical cemeteries across New England. Her journey brought her to the remote and nearly forgotten Oakwood Cemetery, known for its gothic statues and an unsettling number of unmarked graves dating back to the 1800s. The cemetery was secluded, surrounded by dense woods that thrived in their isolation from the nearest town, which was miles away. Eliza arrived just before dusk, hoping the setting sun would provide the perfect natural filter for her photographs. She felt a chill in the air, not just from the encroaching night, but from the silent rows of tombstones, each whispering histories lost to time. Equipped with her camera and a strong flashlight, Eliza walked among the gravestones, reading the names and dates, imagining the lives they once held. The air was still, filled only with the sound of rustling leaves and the occasional distant call of a night bird. She found herself drawn to an ancient oak tree, its branches sprawling out above a cluster of neglected graves. The headstones here were worn and moss-covered, their inscriptions nearly illegible. Focusing her camera, Eliza took several photos, playing with the angles and the dying light. When the sun had set and twilight settled over Oakwood Cemetery, her surroundings took on a more sinister feel. The statues, angelic during the day, now cast ominous shadows that twisted across the ground like dark, elongated fingers. As darkness enveloped her, Eliza felt a growing sense of unease. She reminded herself that it was just her imagination, fueled by the creepy atmosphere of the cemetery. Trying to focus on her project, she reviewed her photos from the camera's display, not noticing the subtle shift in the ambient noises around her. The rustling leaves turned into hushed whispers, as if the wind were speaking in tongues. Eliza shook her head, chiding herself for being frightened so easily. She decided to take one last photograph near the old chapel at the heart of the cemetery, a structure that had long been abandoned and was rumored to be haunted by those who had once tended it. As she approached the chapel, her flashlight beam cut through the darkness, illuminating the path lined with overgrown thorn bushes. The air grew colder, her breath visible in the light of her flashlight. The chapel loomed ahead, its windows dark and empty, like the eyes of a long-dead corpse. Eliza stepped inside, the door creaking ominously behind her. The interior was shrouded in shadows, the only light coming from her flashlight, and the faint glow of the moon filtering through the broken windows. The pews were covered in dust, and cobwebs hung from the ceiling like tattered curtains. Setting up her camera on a tripod, she framed her shot, capturing the eerie desolation of the chapel. As she adjusted the focus, a sudden movement in the corner of her viewfinder caught her attention. Startled, she looked up from her camera, scanning the darkness with her flashlight. Nothing. Convincing herself it was just a trick of the light, or perhaps a small animal, she returned to her camera. But as she looked through the lens, she froze. There, in the back row of the chapel, was the clear silhouette of a person sitting in the pews. Her heart raced as she slowly lifted her eyes from the camera, her hands trembling as she aimed the flashlight towards the back of the chapel. The beam of light flickered, and for a moment illuminated an empty pew. But as the light steadied, Eliza saw it. The figure was still there, barely discernible in the dimness. It was motionless, almost blending into the shadows, but unmistakably human. The story of Eliza and her eerie encounter in Oakwood Cemetery was far from over. As the figure slowly turned its head towards her, Eliza had to decide whether to confront this apparition or flee from the chilling secret the chapel held. The night was deep, and the isolated cemetery held more than just the dead. It seemed to echo with the whispers of the past, each one a story yearning to be told. Eliza's breath caught in her throat as she stared at the figure, her mind racing between denial and the stark reality of what her eyes perceived. The figure was shrouded in darkness, making it difficult to discern its features or even its intentions. Slowly, it stood, the sound of the creaking pew cutting through the silence like a knife. Eliza's instinct screamed for her to run, but her legs felt as if they were rooted to the spot. With her heart pounding in her ears, Eliza did the only thing she felt she could. She spoke. Who are you? Her voice was a whisper, quivering with fear and cold. The figure didn't respond, but began to move slowly down the aisle toward her, each step deliberate, 
echoing softly in the chapel. Eliza's grip tightened on her flashlight, her other hand instinctively reaching for the camera, as if documenting this encounter could somehow make it less terrifying. The figure stopped a few pews away from her, its presence overwhelming, the air around it seeming to shimmer slightly as if distorted by heat, an impossibility in the chilly air of the chapel. Gathering every ounce of courage, Eliza shone her flashlight directly at the figure. The light seemed to pass through it, casting a weak shadow against the chapel's floor, but not illuminating any features. It was as if the figure was made of smoke, dense yet intangible. Eliza's mind struggled to make sense of it, her scientific reasoning clashing with the undeniable evidence of her senses. Why are you here? She tried again, her voice stronger this time, though her body trembled. The figure remained silent, its stillness more terrifying than any movement. Then, almost imperceptibly, it began to disperse, dissolving into the air like mist, leaving Eliza alone with the echoing sound of her own heartbeat. Shaken, Eliza quickly packed up her equipment, her earlier fascination with the cemetery's macabre beauty now replaced by a desperate need to leave. As she stepped outside the chapel, the fog seemed to have thickened, swirling around her, cloaking the path back to her car. The moon obscured by clouds offered little light, and the beam from her flashlight cut a narrow path through the darkness. The whispers returned, now clear enough to distinguish words, though they made little sense. Phrases floated through the air, fragments of prayers or pleas, snippets of lives long past. The air grew colder, a deep, penetrating cold that seemed to seep into her bones. Eliza hurried along the path, her footsteps quick and uneven, her breath coming out in ragged gasps. She could feel something behind her, a presence, the same one from the chapel, or perhaps others, drawn by her fear. She didn't dare look back, focusing only on the faint glow of the exit sign at the cemetery gate. Just as she reached the gate, a chilling gale swept through the cemetery, the winds moaning as if in pain, carrying with them a final, desperate whisper, Don't leave us. Eliza pushed through the gate, almost collapsing as she crossed the threshold back into the less ominous world of the living. She threw her equipment into the car and drove away without looking back, the cemetery fading into the night behind her. But even as she left the boundaries of Oakwood Cemetery, the sensation of being watched did not abate. The whispers occasionally surfaced above the sound of the car engine, a haunting reminder that her escape might not be as complete as she hoped. The story of Eliza and the spirits of Oakwood was far from over. A chapter concluded, but the book far from closed. Eliza's drive home was fraught with anxiety. Her eyes flicked constantly to the rearview mirror, half expecting to see the shadowy figure sitting in the back seat. But there was nothing, only her camera bags and the soft hum of the engine breaking the suffocating silence. Every creak and moan of her old car sounded like the whispers she had left behind in the cemetery. By the time she reached her small apartment in the heart of the city, it was well past midnight. The usual comfort of home felt distant as she stepped inside. Her living space, usually a sanctuary, now seemed foreign and unwelcoming. She locked the door behind her, the click of the deadbolt sounding unusually loud in the quiet of the night. Exhausted but too unsettled to sleep, Eliza decided to review the photograph she had taken at Oakwood Cemetery. Perhaps, she thought, seeing the images might help her process what had happened. She transferred the photos to her computer, her hands shaking slightly as she clicked through the digital images. The photos from the beginning of her visit displayed the expected eerie beauty of the old cemetery, the crumbling gravestones, the overgrown paths, the haunting silhouettes of statues in the dying light. But as she reached the images taken inside the chapel, her breath caught in her throat. There, in the background of a photo showing the chapel's altar, was the figure. It was much clearer than she had seen with her own eyes, its features disturbingly detailed. It was looking directly at the camera, directly at her. A cold sweat broke out across her skin as she leaned closer to the screen, her heart pounding. The figure's eyes, if they could be called that, were hollow, black pools, and its mouth was a mere slit, twisted into a semblance of a smile. It was as if it knew she would see this knew she would look again. Disturbed, Eliza quickly closed the image viewer, her mind racing. The logical part of her screamed that it was just a trick of light and shadow, a figment of her imagination fueled by the eerie atmosphere of the cemetery. But another part, the part that had heard the whispers and seen the figure dissolve into mist, knew better. 
She decided she needed air, needed to clear her head. Stepping out onto her small balcony, Eliza breathed in the cool night air, trying to calm her nerves. The city lights twinkled below her, a stark contrast to the dark, wooded isolation of Oakwood Cemetery. As she leaned on the railing, trying to relax, she heard it again, the faintest whisper, carried on the breeze. Stay with us. The whisper was followed by a low, mournful tolling, like that of a distant bell. It was impossible, she thought. She was miles away from Oakwood, from that chapel bell, yet the sound was unmistakable. Terrified, Eliza turned to go back inside, but stopped dead in her tracks. There, reflecting in the glass door leading back into her apartment, was the figure. It stood just behind her, so close she could almost feel what might have been its breath on her neck. She could see it in the glass, but when she whipped around, there was nothing there, only the empty balcony. Eliza's heart raced as she slowly turned back to the door. The figure was still there in the reflection, closer now. Its hollow eyes seemed to bore into her, a silent command to come back with it. Frozen with fear, Eliza watched helplessly as its hand reached out towards her reflection, touching her shoulder. In that instant, the city lights went out, plunging the balcony into darkness. When the lights flickered back on, Eliza was gone. Her camera lay abandoned on the balcony floor, the last image on its screen showing the dark figure, its hand extended out of the reflection and into her world. The mystery of Eliza's disappearance remained unsolved, her story becoming just another urban legend whispered among the locals. Oakwood Cemetery lay quiet, its secrets and its spirits undisturbed, waiting for the next curious soul to cross its gates. Eliza's drive home was fraught with anxiety. Her eyes flicked constantly to the rearview mirror, half expecting to see the shadowy figure sitting in the back seat. But there was nothing, only her camera bags and the soft hum of the engine breaking the suffocating silence. Every creak and moan of her old car sounded like the whispers she had left behind in the cemetery. By the time she reached her small apartment in the heart of the city, it was well past midnight. The usual comfort of home felt distant as she stepped inside. Her living space, usually a sanctuary, now seemed foreign and unwelcoming. She locked the door behind her, the click of the deadbolt sounding unusually loud in the quiet of the night. Exhausted but too unsettled to sleep, Eliza decided to review the photographs she had taken at Oakwood Cemetery. Perhaps, she thought, seeing the images might help her process what had happened. She transferred the photos to her computer, her hands shaking slightly as she clicked through the digital images. The photos from the beginning of her visit displayed the expected eerie beauty of the old cemetery. The crumbling gravestones, the overgrown paths, the haunting silhouettes of statues in the dying light. But as she reached the images taken inside the chapel, her breath caught in her throat. There, in the background of a photo showing the chapel's altar, was the figure. It was much clearer than she had seen with her own eyes, its features disturbingly detailed. It was looking directly at the camera, directly at her. A cold sweat broke out across her skin as she leaned closer to the screen, her heart pounding. The figure's eyes, if they could be called that, were hollow, black pools, and its mouth was a mere slit, twisted into a semblance of a smile. It was as if it knew she would see this, knew she would look again. Disturbed, Eliza quickly closed the image viewer, her mind racing. The logical part of her screamed that it was just a trick of light and shadow, a figment of her imagination fueled by the eerie atmosphere of the cemetery. But another part, the part that had heard the whispers and seen the figure dissolve into mist, knew better. She decided she needed air, needed to clear her head. Stepping out onto her small balcony, Eliza breathed in the cool night air, trying to calm her nerves. The city lights twinkled below her, a stark contrast to the dark, wooded isolation of Oakwood Cemetery. As she leaned on the railing, trying to relax, she heard it again, the faintest whisper, carried on the breeze. Stay with us. The whisper was followed by a low, mournful tolling, like that of a distant bell. It was impossible, she thought. She was miles away from Oakwood, from that chapel bell. Yet the sound was unmistakable. Terrified, Eliza turned to go back inside, but stopped dead in her tracks. There, reflecting in the glass door leading back into her apartment, was the figure. 
It stood just behind her, so close she could almost feel what might have been its breath on her neck. She could see it in the glass, but when she whipped around, there was nothing there, only the empty balcony. Eliza's heart raced as she slowly turned back to the door. The figure was still there in the reflection, closer now. Its hollow eyes seemed to bore into her, a silent command to come back with it. Frozen with fear, Eliza watched helplessly as its hand reached out towards her reflection, touching her shoulder. In that instant, the city lights went out, plunging the balcony into darkness. When the lights flickered back on, Eliza was gone. Her camera lay abandoned on the balcony floor, the last image on its screen showing the dark figure, its hand extended out of the reflection and into her world. The mystery of Eliza's disappearance remained unsolved, her story becoming just another urban legend whispered among the locals. Oakwood Cemetery lay quiet, its secrets and its spirits undisturbed, waiting for the next curious soul to cross its gates. Michael's heart thudded painfully in his chest as the sound of the footsteps grew louder, more distinct. The fog, thick and relentless, showed no sign of relenting. Each step seemed to come from everywhere and nowhere, disorienting him further in the suffocating mist. Gripping his notebook tightly, as if the small book could offer some protection, Michael tried to steady his breathing. The footsteps stopped abruptly, leaving a haunting silence that seemed even more terrifying than the sounds themselves. He strained his ears, listening for any sign of movement, but there was nothing. Only the soft whisper of the wind through the leaves. Compelled by a mix of fear and the need to escape, Michael decided to move. He chose a direction where he thought the main path might be and began walking quickly, his eyes barely able to see a few feet ahead. Every shadow seemed to shift as he passed, and the quiet was oppressive, weighing heavily on his already frayed nerves. Suddenly, his foot caught on something unseen in the low visibility, sending him sprawling to the ground. The impact knocked the wind out of him, and his notebook flew from his grasp, landing somewhere out of reach in the darkness. As he lay there, trying to recover, his hands felt the cold, hard edges of a tombstone next to him. Pulling himself up, he tried to read the inscription, hoping to recognize the name or find some clue to his location. His fingers traced the worn letters, but before he could make them out, the sound of footsteps resumed, this time faster, almost running. Michael's heart raced with panic. He scrambled to his feet, not daring to look back, driven by the primal urge to flee. As he ran, the fog seemed to swirl violently around him, as if it were alive, reacting to his terror. He kept moving, driven by adrenaline, until he saw a faint light ahead. Hope surged through him. It was possibly the streetlight at the cemetery's entrance, a sign he was finally nearing the exit. Pushing himself harder, he aimed for the light, his lungs burning with the cold air. As he drew closer, however, Michael realized that the light was too dim, too flickering to be a streetlight. It was coming from a lantern, held aloft by a shadowy figure standing in the middle of the path. Stopping in his tracks, Michael squinted through the fog, trying to make out who it might be. The figure stood still, the lantern casting eerie shadows across its face, obscuring its features. Hello? Michael called out, his voice unsteady. I need help finding my way out. The figure remained silent, its stance unnerving in its stillness. As Michael waited for a response, the air around him grew inexplicably colder, and he felt a chilling sense of dread. This was no rescuer. This was something else. Something that didn't wish him well. Realizing his mistake, Michael took a hesitant step backward, his instincts screaming at him to run, to escape the menacing presence before him. But as he moved, the figure finally spoke, its voice a low, gravelly whisper that seemed to come from the ground itself. You cannot leave just yet. The words hung heavy in the air, filled with a menace that sent shivers down Michael's spine. He knew then that his night in the cemetery was far from over, and that finding his way out would not be as simple as following a path back to the gate. The true nature of Hillcrest Cemetery and its spectral inhabitants was slowly revealing itself, and Michael was caught right in the heart of its darkest secrets. Michael's heart pounded against his chest as if trying to escape the dread that enveloped him. The figure, shrouded in the heavy mist, seemed to grow taller, its outline blurring and shifting unnaturally. Michael's mind raced. Every instinct told him to run, but his legs refused to move, frozen by the chilling words. Why can't I leave? Michael managed to choke out, his voice barely a whisper.
The figure took a step forward, the lantern's dim light flickering eerily. Because you have not yet seen what needs to be seen, it replied, its voice a rasping echo that seemed to come from everywhere at once. Before Michael could respond, the ground beneath him began to tremble, and a cold wind whipped around him, howling with the voices of the forgotten. The graves around him seemed to shift, the earth stirring as if something below was awakening. Michael stumbled back, his fear peaking as he realized the graves were not just moving, they were opening. From the disturbed earth, spectral figures began to rise, their forms wispy and translucent, yet terrifyingly distinct. They were the residents of Hillcrest, each bound to the cemetery, their souls restless and tormented. Their eyes, hollow and devoid of life, fixed on him with an intensity that rooted him to the spot. The figure with the lantern stepped aside, its job as a herald complete. Witness, it commanded, the word a death knell to any hope Michael had of escape. The apparitions moved towards him, their hands reaching out, their faces contorted in silent screams and pleadings. Michael tried to back away, but each step was harder than the last, the ground clinging to his feet like quicksand. He realized with horror that the cemetery didn't just want him to see, it wanted him to join the legion of lost souls. As the first ghostly hands brushed against his skin, cold and as real as anything he'd ever felt, Michael's scream tore through the night. The sensation of the spectral touch was paralyzing, draining him of warmth and will. More hands reached for him, pulling him towards the open graves, their whispers becoming a cacophony in his ears. No, this isn't real, Michael cried out, but his denial was weak, futile against the overwhelming presence of the dead. The boundary between the living and the dead blurred as he was drawn ever closer to the earth. Just as his knees hit the ground, ready to be swallowed by the grave, the spectral figures halted, their eerie silence returning as abruptly as their assault had begun. From the mist, a new figure emerged, this one distinctly solid, its steps heavy against the soft earth of the cemetery. It was Harold, the caretaker, his face grave and knowing. Harold approached and stood before Michael, who was now kneeling helplessly on the ground. The cemetery keeps balance, Harold said solemnly. It shows the living the weight of the past, the pain of the forgotten. You were meant to see, to remember, not to join them. Michael's mind reeled as he absorbed Harold's words, the reality of his experience settling into his bones like a cold truth. Why me? He asked, his voice hoarse. Because someone must bear witness, must tell the stories of those who can no longer speak for themselves, Harold replied, extending a hand to help Michael to his feet. With Harold's help, Michael stood, shaky and overwhelmed. As they walked back towards the cemetery gates, the spectral figures watched silently, their presence receding into the shadows of the graves they had emerged from. Leaving the cemetery behind, Michael knew his life would never be the same. Hillcrest had changed him, marked him in ways that words could never fully capture. He was a part of the cemetery's legacy now, bound to return, to remember, and to warn others of the thin veil between life and death that Hillcrest so eerily guarded. Cassie, an aspiring documentary filmmaker with a keen interest in historical narratives, had always been drawn to the untold stories of the past. For her latest project, she chose to explore and document the forgotten Burley Cemetery, nestled on the outskirts of her hometown. Known for its decaying tombstones and overgrown pathways, Burley Cemetery held stories from the Civil War era, many of which had never been fully explored. Equipped with her camera and audio recording equipment, Cassie arrived at the cemetery just as the afternoon light began to wane casting long shadows between the gnarled trees and weathered stones. The air was thick with the scent of moss and damp earth, a quiet atmosphere that was perfect for her work but unsettling all the same. She began filming, narrating her observations and capturing the eerie beauty of the neglected gravestones, many of which were partially sunk into the ground, their inscriptions nearly erased by time. As she delved deeper into the cemetery, she noticed an area that seemed oddly out of place. This section was oddly well kept compared to the surrounding decay, with freshly cut grass and newer looking tombstones that shimmered under the fading sunlight. Curiosity peaked, Cassie approached the area, her camera rolling. She read out loud the names and dates, noting that these graves were from much later periods, some as recent as a decade ago. This was unusual for Burley, predominantly known for its 19th century burials. 
The modern section was an anomaly. As she was filming, Cassie's foot caught on something hidden under the thick underbrush. She stumbled, catching herself before falling, and looked down to see what had tripped her. It was a small, unmarked stone, partially buried in the ground. Intrigued, she cleared the vegetation around it, revealing that it wasn't just a stone, but a tiny, unmarked grave, much older and forgotten compared to its well-maintained neighbors. The discovery sent a chill through her, the stark contrast between the forgotten tiny grave and the well-kept newer ones painting a grim picture of neglect and perhaps hidden histories. Intent on capturing this on film, she set up her camera on a tripod, focusing on the small grave. She began narrating her thoughts about the disparities in memorialization when she heard a noise, a soft, rustling sound that seemed to come from just behind her. Cassie turned around quickly, her heart racing as she scanned the area with her camera. The cemetery was still and quiet once again, as if the sound had never been. Shaking off the feeling of unease, she turned back to her equipment, only to find that her camera was no longer recording. Confused, she checked the battery, full, and tried to restart it, but it refused to turn on. Feeling increasingly nervous as the light began to fade, Cassie decided to gather her equipment and leave. As she packed up, she couldn't shake the feeling of being watched. The rustling noise returned, closer now, accompanied by a faint whispering that seemed almost like a sigh carried on the wind. Heart pounding, Cassie hoisted her backpack and started to walk briskly back toward the entrance of the cemetery. The path, familiar just hours before, now seemed confusing, winding. The trees loomed closer, their branches clawing at her as she passed. The whispers grew louder, a cacophony of indistinct voices that seemed to echo from the graves themselves. As she tried to quicken her pace, the path ahead of her seemed to stretch, the gate nowhere in sight. The whispering voices crescendoed, surrounding her in a vortex of sound and fear. Realizing she might be lost, Cassie pulled out her phone to use its GPS, but the screen flickered erratically before going completely dark. Standing in the deepening gloom, surrounded by the oppressive whispering of the unseen, Cassie felt a cold dread settle over her. The story of the forgotten grave and the unsettling cemetery was far from over, and Cassie knew she had to find a way out before the darkness completely enveloped her. Cassie's breath came out in ragged gasps as she fumbled with her phone, desperately trying to reboot it, but the device remained unresponsive. The whispering grew louder, the words indistinguishable but fraught with a desperate mournful tone. Her heart pounded in her chest, each beat echoing the urgent need to escape the enclosing darkness. Realizing that her technological lifeline was useless, Cassie steeled herself and decided to rely on her memory of the layout. She turned around, attempting to retrace her steps. However, the landscape seemed to have altered subtly. The paths, once clear and distinct, now twisted strangely, their directions obscured by overgrown bushes and creeping vines. The encroaching fog didn't help, thickening around her with every step, dampening the ground and her spirits equally. The air grew colder, a chill that seemed to seep into her bones, making her shiver uncontrollably. Despite the fear clawing at her mind, Cassie pushed forward, her eyes straining in the dim light to make out familiar landmarks. She paused at a recognizable angel statue, one she remembered passing earlier that day. It stood sentinel over a row of aged tombstones, its face eroded by time, giving it a ghastly, featureless appearance. The sight of it, though eerie, was a small comfort. It meant she was at least somewhat on the right path. Gathering her resolve, Cassie moved past the statue, her pace quickening as the whispers seemed to follow her. The sounds were now punctuated by the occasional distant clang, like the tolling of a bell, though there was no church or chapel within the cemetery. The noise resonated through the fog, disorienting her further, pulling at her attention from every direction. Suddenly, ahead in the mist, a soft glow appeared. Cassie squinted, trying to discern its source. It seemed too steady to be a reflection and too bright to be merely a trick of her strained eyes. Hope surged through her, propelling her towards the light. Perhaps it was someone with a lantern or flashlight, maybe the caretaker or another late visitor. As she approached, however, the light began to move, swaying gently as if carried by hand. Cassie called out, her voice hoarse, Hello, is someone there? I need help! But instead of a response, the light simply continued to move, leading her deeper into the cemetery. Cassie followed, her doubts gnawed at by desperation, 
The light led her to a neglected part of the cemetery she didn't recognize. Here, the graves were older, their markers cracked and tilting, overgrown with ivy. The light stopped over a particularly decrepit grave without a headstone, merely an old rusted metal cross stuck in the ground. The whispers abruptly ceased, and the silence that followed was suffocating. Cassie, standing before the unmarked grave, felt a sudden drop in temperature, her breath visible in the air as frost began to form on the grass around her feet. The light flickered and then went out, plunging her into darkness once again. Heart racing, Cassie fumbled for her flashlight, her hands trembling. When the beam of light pierced the darkness, she gasped. The grave before her was open, the earth disturbed, as if something had recently emerged from it, or was inviting her to enter. The story of Cassie in the mysterious and malevolent Burley Cemetery was far from over. As she stood at the edge of the open grave, the frost spreading beneath her feet, the implications of her discovery began to sink in. She was at the heart of the cemetery's darkest secret, a place where the whispers had led her and from which she might not escape. Frozen with fear, Cassie stared down into the dark, gaping maw of the open grave. Her flashlight flickered ominously, casting long, dancing shadows across the disturbed earth and the surrounding gravestones. A cold breeze whipped around her, carrying with it a faint, almost mocking laughter that seemed to emanate from the grave itself. Cassie's mind raced, her initial impulse to flee warring with her deep-seated need to understand what was happening. As she hesitated, the air around her grew inexplicably colder, her breath now a cloud of vapor that obscured her vision. The edges of her vision began to blur, the periphery of her sight encroaching darkness that seemed alive, pulsing. She could hear her heart pounding in her ears, each beat a drum of dread. The laughter grew louder, no longer just a whisper on the wind, but clear and chilling. It was then that Cassie realized the laughter was not coming from the grave, but from behind her. Whirling around, her flashlight's beam cut through the darkness to reveal nothing but the fog and the silent tombstones. Yet the laughter continued, echoing around her, as if the cemetery itself was alive with sinister mirth. Panicking, Cassie stepped back, her foot catching on the edge of the grave. She stumbled, her arms flailing for balance, but it was too late. She fell backward, the ground disappearing beneath her as she tumbled into the cold embrace of the open grave. The fall was short, her body hitting the bottom with a thud that knocked the wind out of her. Dazed and in pain, Cassie lay there, the laughter now a crescendo in her ears. She tried to rise, but her body refused her commands, shock and fear paralyzing her as much as the fall. Above her, the rim of the grave seemed impossibly high, the night sky a distant memory. Then, Something appeared at the edge of the grave, a silhouette, backlit by the moonlight, its features obscured. The figure was watching her, its stance eerily calm as the laughter stopped abruptly. Cassie's breaths came in ragged gasps as she tried to speak, to ask for help, but only a hoarse whisper escaped her lips. The figure remained motionless, then slowly, it reached down, extending a hand, not in help, but in a gesture of invitation. As her eyes adjusted to the low light, Cassie's gaze fell upon the hand. It was decayed, the skin taut and mottled, more skeletal than human. Horror coursed through her as she realized that this was no rescuer. This was something far darker, far more ancient. The figure's voice finally broke the silence, its tone flat, yet somehow filled with a malevolent glee. Welcome to the Forgotten, it said. Here you will remain. With a final sob of despair, Cassie felt the darkness encroach further the edges of her vision dimming until there was nothing but black. The cold seeped into her bones, the grave embracing her as one of its own. Above, the figure watched for a moment longer before it too dissolved into the mist, leaving no trace it had ever existed. In the days that followed, Cassie's disappearance became just another urban legend of Burley Cemetery. Her equipment was found near an old, neglected part of the cemetery, her last recordings a chilling testament to her final, terrifying encounter. The cemetery remained, its whispers carried on the wind, its secrets buried deep within the earth, waiting for the next curious soul to wander its forgotten paths. Thank you for listening. Now watch this video, 